The impact of the June 14 oil spill is wide-reaching and still unfolding, and time will be needed for the authorities to assess the full extent of its environmental impact, said Minister for National Development Desmond Lee. We will then have to embark on recovery and restoration work, he added. Mr. Lee was giving an update on the oil spill on June 19 at the launch of a conference on horseshoe crabs, marine creatures native to Singapore, hosted by the Nature Society, Singapore NSS, at Results World Convention Centre on Sentosa. NSS partnered the International Union for Conservation of Nature's Horseshoe Crab Specialist Group for the event. Mr. Lee's update comes after the Straits Times reported on June 18 that four oil-coated collared kingfishers had been rescued following the oil spill. And two have died. Members of the public have also spotted other oil-covered animals along coastlines, including otters and monitor lizards. The minister said government agencies in Singapore have responded quickly and have been working closely together to coordinate efforts to clean up and mitigate the immediate impact of the spill on the nation's coastal and marine environment. For instance, the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore deployed its nearest patrol craft to the incident site within 11 minutes of being alerted and sprayed dispersants on the spill after assessing the situation. At the same time, non-governmental organisations such as the Singapore Veterinary Association, the Singapore Canoe Federation and the Worldwide Fund for Nature Singapore have stepped up to offer help. Mr Lee said. There has also been an outpouring of support from individuals, with more than 1,500 people signing up to volunteer to assist in the cleanup of the oil spill, he added. In a Facebook post on June 16, he had urged individuals interested in helping with cleanup efforts to sign up via an online form. I am grateful for the strong support from the community, he said. But he noted that, as the safety of the volunteers was paramount, they will not be deployed for beach cleanup. We understand that many want to pitch in and help. We may seek volunteers' help to carry out post impact habitat and biodiversity surveys as well as habitat restoration efforts, Mr. Lee said. On June 16, the National Parks Board coordinated a biodiversity survey with volunteers and the Friends of Marine Park, a volunteer network that includes marine scientists, boaters and ocean-dependent business owners, to assess the oil spill's impact and monitor wildlife in need of rescue. No significant wildlife casualties were observed in the oil slick areas of St. John's and Lazarus Islands during the survey. But conservationists say they are on alert for longer-term ramifications for nature, as it could take time for the impact of oil spills to manifest. Mr. Lee said that an additional 160 volunteers have been activated to assist with patrols and monitoring efforts at East Coast Park and West Coast Park. The oil spill on June 14 occurred after the Netherlands flag dredging boat Vox Maxima hit the stationary Singapore flagged bunker vessel Marine Honor. The incident caused a damaged cargo tank on Marine Honor to leak low sulfur fuel into the sea, resulting in oil slicks observed at coastlines, including Sentosa Island, the Southern Islands, and Changi. Speaking to ST on the sidelines of the Horseshoe Crab Conference, Chair of the NSS Marine Conservation Group Lester Tan said the spilled oil was a low sulfur fuel that is more refined and less viscous than crude oil. But it can still be detrimental to coastal and marine life, including two species of horseshoe crabs that are native to Singapore, he noted. The mangrove and coastal horseshoe crabs are two of four species of horseshoe crabs globally. By foraging on the seafloor for food, Horseshoe crabs help to release nutrients in the sediment for other creatures. They also serve as a vital food source for migratory birds. Mr. Tan highlighted that the coastal horseshoe crab, which is an endangered species, has been spotted at intertidal areas in East Coast Park, one of the areas affected by the oil spill. 
The mangrove horseshoe crab can be found in places such as the Kranji and Mandai mangroves and mudflats, which are currently oil-free. Hence, the hope is that the oil slick beaches at East Coast can be cleared before this weekend. He added. If the beach is not clean soon and the coastal horseshoe crab comes into contact with the oil, then it can be lethal and toxic, Mr. Tan said. Apart from pollution, horseshoe crab populations around the world face other threats from human activity. A major driver of the decline of horseshoe crabs is the biomedical industry's demand for their blue-tinged blood. Horseshoe crab blood contains the clotting enzyme that is crucial for bacterial testing in drugs and medical devices. News site Politico reported in January 2021 that horseshoe crab blood was used in the testing of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. According to the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission, 718,809 horseshoe crabs were collected to be harvested for their blood and released alive along the United States Atlantic coast for biomedical purposes in 2021. About 15% of the horseshoe crabs died during the process. Researchers in Singapore are conducting research that could help in the conservation of the unique creatures, often referred to as living fossils, given their unchanged appearance over millions of years. Mr. Lee cited the work led by National University of Singapore scientists to develop a synthetic alternative which is more stable and chemically consistent to the clotting enzyme in horseshoe crab's blood. Speaking to The Straits Times, Professor Ding Jik Ling, the NUS professor co-leading the project, said that she expects approval for the synthetic compound to be used as a compendial test, a standard method of assessment for bacterial endotoxins, by the year end. If successful, the compound would eliminate the necessity of harvesting horseshoe crab's blood. The only thing now is that habitat needs to be improved, she said. The fifth international workshop on the science and conservation of horseshoe crabs will conclude on June 23. Over the next few days, experts will delve into discussions on horseshoe crab biology, conservation and public education, alongside developing a conservation action plan for Asian horseshoe crabs.